Hi, Chris Murray, your creative tech guy here. You've probably heard a lot about a thing called Blab. Uh, it's a new uh, web-based video chatting service that is basically like uh, Skype or Google Hangout over the web, and you can invite people into your chat, and you can chat about anything you want, really. But a lot of people are starting to see the potential of this for business and other uh, social media networking. And so they want to do some more complex things with their video equipment in Blab. So what I'm going to do over the course of these uh, couple short videos is to show you how to introduce a video switcher into your Blab video stream. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look very quickly at what um, Blab is all about. So Blab is a, an app that plays in a browser at like Chrome. And what it does is it basically connects you, uh, it connects your webcam to the world. And on the other side of that webcam is you. You're over here and you want to connect to your webcam and go through Blab and get to the world. So let's go ahead and just make those connections so that we can see how it's actually going to work. Your webcam turns on. It's identified as your webcam in Chrome, which is your browser, and then it's transmitted to the world. And of course, you're on the other side of that. But what if you want to do something a little more interesting? What if you want to add a video switcher? A lot of people are using a video switcher called Minicam, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today uh, in the context of a video switcher. So what is a video switcher, first of all? Well, a video switcher, and I'll just go ahead and create this here. I'm going to call this Minicam. Okay, Minicam allows you to take multiple webcams or multiple different types of things and um, hook it into the browser. So Minicam uh, works like your webcam, but it plugs into the browser. And your webcam then plugs in to Minicam. Now the other cool thing is that you can have a lot of interesting things also be part of your video switcher, in this case Minicam. For example, you can have graphics. You can show your desktop. You can play audio. And you can even have multiple camera shots if you have more than one webcam. So for example, you have your webcam in here. And I'll go ahead and say, uh, here's webcam two. And then you could have multiple shots, right? So we'll go ahead and move this down here. And you can see that you can really begin to organize your things. In fact, I'll go ahead. I'm using Minicam right now. I'll go ahead and switch over to my studio view, my studio cam. And you can see that I have a separate webcam. And I'm using Minicam to do that. So in essence, that is essentially what Minicam or any of these other video switchers is. It's a way for you to uh, hook up multiple uh, different multimedia elements through the web browser in uh, and and transmit it out to the world. Now there are a couple different ways in Chrome to actually do this, and that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so now that we understand how Blab fits in connection to the rest of the internet world and Minicam, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings in Chrome before we go any further, so that when you install either Minicam or your video switcher of choice, you know what's going on here. So uh, in Chrome, you come over here to, people are calling this this hamburger button, which um, I find uh, somewhat amusing. So we'll come over here, we'll choose the settings button, because that's really what it is. You go into settings, and you scroll down to show advanced settings. And uh, right away you see under privacy, you see content settings. In content settings, this is where you will set up your microphone in your video system. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see you have two settings here. You have a setting for your camera and you have a setting for your microphone. Now, depending on how you have it set up, you can see I have several, uh, I have a couple webcams in here, so I need, they each have their own microphone. I have a different um, software switcher solution, but here is where Minicam is set up. So I can either choose to use the virtual microphone through Minicam, because remember, Minicam is plugged into, it's a, it's a switcher, right? So you can have different inputs into it, including audio. Or I can actually use the microphone um, that is uh, uh, directly attached to my computer. I don't have to go through any software if I don't want to. Some people switch back and forth between these two. This is, you're going to want to experiment with this to see which one gives you the best results. Um, frequently, I use I go straight with the microphone into um, 
into uh, the browser and via Blab, and that gives me some limitations in terms of what I can do with Minicam. If I do go straight into Minicam, I run the risk of getting some kind of echo or something in my headphones. So you're going to want to experiment around a little bit with this. Underneath here, this is where you definitely want to have Minicam or whatever camera switcher software you're using. You want this to be chosen as your software, and what this will do is this will pipe whatever's coming out of Minicam, as you saw in my flowchart, and pipe it into the browser and out to the world. Okay, you can see I have a couple of other ones here. I have Wirecast and I have XSplit also uh, as virtual cameras, but this is the one I'm currently using now as Minicam. And obviously, if, if, you're, what you're, if you have a single camera right now and you have not installed Minicam, you're, the camera here is going to be one of your uh, uh, default devices. So that's where you set everything up. And then, um, so let's go ahead and actually take a look at how we can use Minicam. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into Minicam. I'm not going to do a really deep tutorial on Minicam uh, because it's just not necessary. And once you get the basics down, you can kind of play around with a bunch of other things. But I do just want you to remember that basically Minicam is a funnel. You're going to put a bunch of different things in here called channels. Uh, and these channels are going to go through Minicam and out to your Blab browser and then out to the world. So um, that's the whole point of using Minicam. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I've gone ahead and I've installed Minicam and uh, I have it here. This is kind of the default configuration for the most part. You probably have one camera set up here. Um, at least I hope you do. Um, uh, I, when I installed it, I just assumed that it automatically set that up. Um, now, I will say, uh, if you're on a Mac or a PC, I have heard back some reports from other people on Blab that Minicam has a little bit of trouble with the Mac OS. I'm not sure what the problems are. I don't know what that is. So I can't troubleshoot that. So please don't post your, question, your Mac questions uh, below in the comments because there's nothing I can do to help you with that. Um, but uh, I'm on a PC, and for the most part, it's it's working fine. It's it's meeting most of my needs. I'm I'm trying out a couple of different switchers, but a lot of people tend to be using Minicam. So let's go ahead and just do this one. So, um, so I've got uh, my Minicam here, and you have these boxes over here. These are called your channels, right? Um, or you know your shots or whatever nomenclature you want to use. Video people who do you know hardcore video production or broadcast video. You know, I think they call these, this is your shot list or your various shots. Um, the whole setup of what you will create is probably called a show or something like that. Uh, you'll notice that um, you don't actually have a file save in Minicam because once you set these things up, they are remembered until the next time you come back into Minicam. So if you're looking for a file save, you want to save your configuration, just know that whatever you have set up automatically saves. So remember, we are bringing graphics, maybe our desktop, uh, we're playing some audio, um, doing some web, uh, some webcams in there. So let's show you how to set this up. So you have these channels or shots that have little plus boxes. This indicates that these are open and you can actually put something in there. Across the bottom, you have the ability to um, control whatever is up in the channel. So if you're doing, you know, if you want text on top of your graphic or on top of your video, um, if you want to overlay the time counter, you can do that. If you want to do a lower third, you can do that. If you don't know what a lower third is, um, that's this type of thing where I can put my uh, name and title up there and it uh, comes onto the screen. I will say that they only have some defaults for lower thirds. They don't have a lot of um, presets for this. And at the current time, you cannot make your own. I reached out to Minicam and they said uh, no dice on that. I've asked them if they're going to add more presets. If you click the drop down there, you can see you can get more presets. But I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Let's go ahead and let's do the basic stuff first. Okay, so to add anything to any one of these channels, all you need to do is click on the plus button and you'll get a little drop down menu. And this shows you all of the different things that you can add to Minicam. Um, I have multiple cameras. I also have two other switchers, which is kind of like uh, it will create a singularity if I go in there. It'll be like a switcher within a switcher within a switcher. I don't know. I, I don't really want to do that, right? So, but it does show all of the cameras that you have in, in your scene. So right now, I have two cameras. I have the one I'm looking through right now, and I also have the Quick Cam Pro, which is my studio camera. So there you can see I have this. And, and uh, as soon as you add the second camera or the second um, piece of media, it shows up directly in the channel. And if you hover your mouse over top of it, you'll see that it gives you the ability to transition to that. So all you have to do is click on it to transition between the two. It's very, very, very simple. 
Another thing that you might want to do is um, add uh, a, a media file. So let's go ahead. I'm going to choose media files, and I have uh, a little animated film, a little animated backdrop here that I want to add in. And if I go ahead and click to that in transition, you can see that that's now playing my graphic. I'm going to show you some other things that we can we can do there. The other thing that you might be interested in doing is actually showing your desktop. So what you can do is if you come over here, um, you can uh, choose a desktop. And if you know which display you're doing, I think for me it's display four, at least I hope it is. Yeah, there it is. And so this, I have a multiple display system here. That's why I have so many options there. You won't have as many options as, as you saw there. Um, I can transfer to the desktop of whatever application is that I'm showing over here. In this case, I've just launched up Spotify and um, have some things going on there. And then at any time, you just transition back to the shot that you want to work on. So that's pretty much it. it, it it's basically uh, pretty straightforward. What these things have to do with uh, across the bottom, what these things have to do up here is this. So depending on how you have your cameras set up, um, if you go to, let's see, if you go to settings and you go to, uh, you know, this is general recordings video. If you do video, this shows you all of the different video settings that your camera will support. Um, I, you, I, I, I can go all the way up to 1920 by 1080. I'm currently using 1280 by 720 just because it gives me. Um, you know, if, if bandwidth is a problem for you, set this to a low and lower number. You definitely don't want to be below 1024 by 768. Once you get down into there, it gets uh, pretty gnarly. So this is where you can choose what those are settings. So if I choose this, um, you, my camera will shut off. It'll come back on. And now you notice the playback is a lot worse because I'm pushing a lot more data through the pipe. So I'll go back to 720 and see now the performance is a lot better. Uh, you can also do some basic control of the zooming here. Um, and then uh, if you want to do picture in picture, uh, you'll get, you can click on any of these icons and you'll get two more um, uh, layouts. Okay, so if you want to do a layout. So for example, you'll get a layout and you'll notice here you have a blank screen. Now there is the ubiquitous plus sign. If I click that, I get this menu again. And then I can add more things here. So. Uh, if I wanted to, I could, you know, add up. In this case, I'm just going to do a graphic. All right. So I could put a graphic there if I'm talking about something. And while I'm broadcasting, I can be on this tab uh, and I can just be switching back and forth between these things. Right. Now, keep in mind that if you switch off of it, it goes away. Um, if you want to leave it on there the whole time, for example, let's say that's a graphic that you're going to go back to frequently. Um, you can clear this out. So if you have all four of these here and you want to clear out uh, a, a shot that's in there, you click on the, on the shot number and you just say clear and that's how you get back out of there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same camera. I'll do this camera and I'm going to transition to this shot. Now I would be doing this off air, right? I wouldn't be doing this while I'm doing my blab. I'd be doing this as, all in my setup. So I'm going to do my split screen. I'm going to go ahead and get my media file, and we're just going to pick up this graphic here. And that's it. Now, this is a shot. Okay, so my main shot is there, and uh, I can, you know, be transitioning between all of my various shots. But if I uh, have another shot here and I want to kind of explain something to someone, I can actually transition over to that. So that's basically, uh, those are the basics of ManyCam. It's, it's getting these shots into the various channels controlling them. Um, you know, if I want to clear it out, you click on the number and you say clear and you can add anything else. Um, you know, if you're doing game videos or, you know, YouTube, you I haven't had a whole lot of success getting that to work. I, I, there might, I, there must be a little secret sauce in there that's going on. Um, you can show your, uh, displays on camera if you're trying to do a little bit of conferencing. So uh, that's, that's it for basically getting that set up. Let's, I do want to talk a little bit about um, doing some things, some of these other things, like for example, text. Let's say I want to add some text here. So what I'll do is I'll come over here, I'll say enable text, and I'll just put in some text. Okay, and um, pretty straightforward. I'll go ahead and I want to choose a different typeface. So we'll just choose um, Gothic standard, and we'll go ahead and make this fairly large. And I'll set the color to, you know, you could set the color to be whatever you want it to be, but that's fine for now. 
So I'll set that and then I can drag this up just a little bit like that. This is the text window. Uh, if you can see, there's the, you can see the whole t the text window right there. So I'll just make it totally transparent. And then um, if I want to add the, a little time code there, maybe I'll go get the, the time code stamp. And uh, let's see, where did that go? Oh, I have to turn it on. Ah, there we go. Still learning myself, all right? So then you can put the time code stamp there. You can set its size. You can set its, uh, oops, set its position. Let me move it out of the way a little bit. They've got some things that are layered on there. That's fine, so I'll move it around there. Okay, so now you've set up a title and a time. You can you know, have a stopwatch or you can have a countdown. Um, either one of those is uh, easy to do. And then let's talk about the lower third. So I'll come over here and I'll do the lower third. And lower thirds are pretty easy to set up. Um, I've already set up two here, so if you're doing this for the first time, these are probably empty and it just says add new so what you do is you click to click to add a new one and it says mini cam and it's not really obvious but you click in the field here and you can just put in uh your name and what you do let's go ahead and grab that what you do all right and then to take advantage of it you just turn it on and off now in blab you will probably realize that um the titles get cut off a little bit. So here's a little trick. You'll notice that uh, my name is um, uh, pushed over a little bit. What I've done is I've added five spaces. Uh, that seems to accommodate for uh, what, how, blah, how Blab is cropping the image. So if I come over here and I just put in five spaces here and five spaces there um, and you turn it on uh, in Blab, it appears just fine. So. Uh, definitely something to think about. If you want to change the type of lower third like you saw me do previously, you can uh, change it to any one of these. I personally like this one just because it's not as intrusive um, and uh, it just works for me. I, I don't need to be too uh, ridiculous with that. So um, chroma key, I haven't played with this at all, but um, if you have a, the ability to have a green screen, you can uh, crop that up behind you and you can put in a background behind you um, to do that. Now, I'm not going to go into any of this at all, but if you want to add effects or anything like that and have fun, that's up to you. I'm not going to cover that here. You can play around with that. This is really just to get you up to speed on the basics of Minicam. So I hope this has been helpful for, uh, helpful for you. Uh, you know, we're all kind of new to this type of technology in Blab and uh, getting it to hook up and do some interesting things is, you know, kind of what it's all about right now. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for sticking around. Again, my name is Chris Murray. I'm your creative tech guy.